What's going on guys? As you can see, leaves are falling and changing color. That means winter is fast approaching, but thankfully because I get ready so early, I've been ready to go the past month, so no problem there. But today's video is gonna be about my Western HDS plow. I know, what else? But I've had this plow for five years now and I don't think I've ever done a formal review video of what I like about it, what I don't like about it, some of the repairs that I've done to it, how well it's holding up, so just going to be an overall five-year review. I think the first question in my head is would I buy this plow again? And that's absolutely. This plow is not advertised as a commercially used snow plow. It's, it's more designed for you know the homeowner, maybe some light residential work, but honestly I put this thing through some light to moderate commercial use and it's done pretty well for what it is. It's designed for half-ton pickups. By the way the model is a Western HTS so like I said, it's designed to reduce weight and be easier on the front end of half-ton trucks. So they've definitely sacrificed in some areas, but overall it's been holding up quite well. And let me tell you, it really has been one of the best investments I've ever made. First year pretty much is what it took to pay back the plow in terms of you know that, that money I made the first winter. But every winter after that, aside from you know paying for the other fees that I got to pay, like mechanical maintenance on the truck and maintenance on the plow it's an incredibly profitable business if you do it right so let's take a closer look at the plow all right so to start let's start with one of my biggest beefs with Western and honestly they could have done such a better job welding this I'm not saying that their welds are bad but they could have welded a lot more areas therefore strengthening the plow like take these vertical ribs for example there's a weld here, no weld here, it's actually on the other side, and the weld above, it's on the other side. So they kind of altered their welds, and honestly, it really wouldn't have taken much if they just welded that, like, weld one side, the other side. I mean, come on, it would have taken like another 10 seconds to do that, 10 seconds, but I don't know, I guess they were too cheap to weld that, so I always had a huge problem with that. And same goes for the spring hangers. Okay, this is pin and slot construction, which I do like the idea of it, but they really didn't weld this thing on here too good. I mean, look, there's no weld here, here, here. There's no weld, no weld on the inside there. The only thing that's holding this, aside from, you know, the pin and slot construction, which you got a lot of downward tension on that, is there's a little weld in here and a little weld right in there. There really should be weld at least on the top inside right here and same thing on the other side. And then it really wouldn't take much just to weld that up too to add some strength to it, you know? So I'm disappointed with that. Uh, these vertical ribs, as opposed to every other one where the springs are, they're just welded on the outside. There's nothing on the inside, as you can see, just on the outside. Here you have some more kind of pin and slot construction, if you will. But th this just never looked right to me. You could have welded all of this and you could have added so much strength. And you see what's happening, a little gap. Yeah, you can't really see it on the camera too well, but there's a little gap forming up there because everything's twisting this way. Uh, you do have a full weld on the inside, but again, it, it really wouldn't have taken much to just weld that together. While we're down here, when the plow trips, it hinges on this pin. And as you can see, it's starting to wear in a little bit, which isn't a big deal for me because I'm a welder. All I'd have to do is take the springs off and take the whole mold board off and just refill that material in there and re, you know, rebore the hole to get that squared away. But it would have been nice to see a proper bushing and maybe a grease fitting, something a bit heavier duty. But I guess, you know, this is the cheaper option, so. And same thing's going on with these springs a little bit. They're starting to wear in here a little bit. But, you know, it's it's nothing too bad yet. I mean, for five years' use, I think that's doing okay. Knock on wood, I haven't had any serious mechanical issues. I haven't had any pins break or anything like that. I was just checking these pins. Everything still feels pretty tight in here. There's not really any wear that I can feel in here. These do move up and down, but that is... That is normal. They're supposed to move up and down. I think that's to help for the uh, twisting of the plow. 
kingpin I haven't taken that off so I really can't tell you but look can you see that they welded on that side and welded on that side wouldn't have taken much to do a complete circular weld in there and just add you know add some more beef to the plow again weld only on one side and there's a bit of a gap there I really dislike that what else can I tell you I dislike so here's a funny story First year I bought this plow, I took it back to the dealer at the end of the winter because I looked at this side and you see this male receiver bracket? There's a plate right here on the side, on the left side. And then if you go around to the right side, it's wide open. So I thought a piece of plate fell off at some point. The dealer's like, wow, you know, I've never seen that before. So he sends pictures to Western and it turns out this side is actually supposed to be exposed. So I always thought that was kind of unprofessional looking like why have that side boxed in and this side not boxed in? Always kind of strange to me. I think it's kind of funny though, of all places where they decide to put a grease fitting is right here on these hooks. And these hooks are what lock into the receiver brackets. I think that's so silly because you have so many other crucial points that see so much more um, strain and rotation that definitely could have used a grease fitting especially that kingpin there and there's no grease fitting on that nothing on there yet they put it on this little locking jaws which i mean they get open and closed you know once in a storm where maybe this thing goes back and forth 500 times you know so that that really kind of frustrated me really not seeing too much wear on that as for the actual hoses, the hoses do appear to be in good condition. Uh, you know what, I'm starting to see some cracking now. I do keep spare hoses in my truck. I do have an emergency kit, which I will be doing a video on. What I have noticed though, is if you do not paint these fittings on the cylinder, they will rust. So as you can see, I've just thrown some black rust-oleum on there, there as well. A little bit of corrosion starting in there so i sprayed them i think last year but actually here's another thing i was really insecure about when buying this plow is to protect all your hydraulic and electric components they have just this little plastic cover and there's just little slots right there and this hooks on i was always worried about moisture and salt getting up here in the electrical compartment and doing some damage to it but as you can see the cover has actually done quite a nice job. Mind you, every year I will throw electrical grease on these connections, but there really is basically no corrosion in there. So I will give them props on that cover. The cover is definitely doing a good job. All right, here's another point where this plow is definitely lacking and that's in bracing of the cutting edge. Now, about a year or two ago, I did a video on taking this cutting edge off and I actually added several gussets because there were inadequate gussets to start with. And I actually had to bend the mold board back some because it had bent forward and it looks like it's actually starting to do that again. I think one of the major issues with this is what happens when you hit something, it could be something very small, a little rock or even just you know, a high spot of pavement this cutting edge will actually bend forward. And if you have any dirt, debris, little pebbles, rocks, it'll collect in that gap. And over time, it'll just keep pushing and prying it back. So I think I have the fix for that. And I'm gonna be doing that in a video coming up. Very simple if I haven't posted that video already, but there's, yeah, but there's definitely inadequate support for this cutting edge. There really should be something stronger, beefier, I mean, you maybe only have a third of this cutting edge supported and the rest of it's down there. So definitely need to beef this section of the plow up. But you know, to be fair, over the past five years, I have done some pretty moderate commercial work. You know, I've hit a couple curbs, hit a couple rocks. I mean, just some of this stuff is unavoidable. So to be fair, it is holding up pretty well for what it is. But I just think that this section absolutely could be beefier. Here's another kind of small thing. No matter what I do, every year when I put this plow away, I could have the headlights perfectly aligned. 
and then I take it out maybe six months later, one headlight will always be misaligned and the other one seems to be perfect. I don't know if there's some type of western ghost fairy that comes out here and magically like adjusts these headlights over the course of six months, but that has always been something kind of strange. Like one is always perfect and the other one's always kind of off. So, you know, no big deal there, but last winter I actually had one of these bolts break off and it was actually quite a process to be able to replace the bolts in the housing because Wester doesn't really want you to replace those bolts. So that's a whole nother video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. I did find a fix. It took me a while to figure it out, but I saved probably, what, $150 for a new Western headlight, so. Electrical cords. I use the official Western grease, and I've never had a problem with these connections. I make sure they always get put away. I make sure they always get greased heavily, especially at the end of the season. I keep all salt out of there. So I've never had a problem with those connections, but every time I take this plow off after use, I will make sure I grease up those connections. So I think that pretty much covers most of what I wanted to say. So in short, they definitely lacked out on a lot of welding that they could have done to help brace the plow. Instead of doing a complete welding job, in my opinion, or well, actually factually, they only did half a job. So. I'm disappointed in that. I would like to go back in there and you know weld everything, but it would definitely do more damage to the finish and then I'd have to repaint it. So when I eventually do need to repaint it, I think I will definitely be doing more welding to the actual plow structure. Cutting edge definitely has room for improvement when it comes to bracing. I, I think they definitely need to work on that. Yes, I may have done some light commercial work, but take that with a grain of salt. Think about it. If you take this plow for, you know, a uh, homeowner use, you know, residential use, but say it's a bumpy dirt driveway and, you know, you're constantly hitting rocks and tripping that plow. I mean, in my opinion, in some cases, residential work can absolutely be more demanding and damaging to your equipment than, say, a smoothly paved commercial lot. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. The finish of my plow has actually held up quite well. After every storm, I do wash my truck, the underside of the truck, and I wash the plow completely so don't, I don't really give the salt a chance to start corroding stuff. Traditionally, I haven't been a fan of powder coat because the salt likes to get under there and bubble it up, and once it starts, then you got a problem. So I've always kind of liked paint better. Some guys swear by powder coat, but they have done a pretty nice job on the finish coat of this plow, so I will give them props for that. Headlights. I've never had a problem with water coming in the headlights. I did have a problem with that bolt, like I mentioned before, but I was able to come up with a fix on how to replace that bolt. Never had a problem with electrical connections, but then again, I always make sure they're greased. I've never seen any signs of corrosion in there, but just gotta make sure those connections stay clean. It served me well. I've never had a mechanical breakdown with it, knock on wood, but granted, I do take very good care of my equipment, and that's part of the key not to having mechanical breakdowns. If you're thinking about purchasing this plow, hopefully I've given you some insight as to what you know the drawbacks are of this plow, where some of the weak points are. So if you have any other questions about maybe something I didn't cover in this video about this plow, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to do a video about it or share more information with you. And additionally, if anybody has this plow out there and they've had a you know specific failure with it or something they'd like to point out to me, please let me know. You know, I think one of the great things about YouTube is being able to share knowledge with other people who lack that knowledge, but then again, being able to absorb knowledge with people like you who may have different experiences or other knowledge that I don't have. So it's a great tool, especially when you don't have those trolls around. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And until next time.